Good evening, guys. This is <clears throat> Dr. Paul. Once again, thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. As always, visit us at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. That is again www.usmlevideos.net. Tonight, I want to talk a few minutes about Alzheimer's disease. You see, Alzheimer's disease, probably in my estimation, is a very fatal disease because patient loses his or her identity. Losing one's identity is the ultimate form of suffering in this world. And these patients need ultimate care because they're almost like newborn babies because they don't know who they are, they don't know what they are doing. So they need utmost care and um, it is the most common cause of dementia. So among all the causes, we have multivascular infarcts, we have uh, Kruzfeldt jakob disease, Lowe's disease, all these diseases. But among all of them, this disease, Alzheimer's disease, is the most common cause of dementia. In fact, its incidence is increasing. From age 65 to age 85, its incidence increases from 1% to 7%. So as the elderly people, as they mature in their age, they are more and more susceptible to this particular disease. This is actually a progressive degenerative disorder of unknown etiology. In fact, we have all these theories, beta amyloid protein getting uh, accumulated in various arteries in the brain and around the body. But still, the exact cause of this disease is unknown. But we say that there are two important things in the pathology, neuritic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. So neurofibrillary tangles and neuritic plaques and the main difference is in the distribution. The neuritic plaques are extracellular depositions, whereas neuritic tangles are intra intracellular things. So those two important things in terms of the distribution. Again, the neuritic plaques are extracellular, whereas neurofibrillary tangles are intracellular in their distribution. Now, there are many, many genes implicated in this disease. The, on the top of the list are APP, the uh, amyloid beta precursor protein, then PS1, presenilin 1, then PS2, presenilin 2, and uh, APOE. And finally, in patients with trisomy 21, that is Down's syndrome, Many of these patients develop Alzheimer's disease in fourth decade. So Down syndrome patients, when you deal with them, you should always have the suspicion of Alzheimer's disease whenever there is a sudden deterioration in their cognitive functions, especially as they approach fourth decade. And now a few words about beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is a acidic protein and it deposits in various arteries. And as I said, especially the neuritic plaques are made up of beta amyloid protein. The second important mechanism in Alzheimer's disease is choline deficiency. So acetylcholine is deficient. It is depleted in so many of these patients. That's why we use acetylcholine inducing medications in these patients. I will discuss that in a minute in when we talk about the treatment. So basically those are the important uh, pathological mechanisms involved in Alzheimer's disease. Now let us go to the symptoms and signs. The earliest manifestation is the disturbance in recent memory. Whenever you find a patient, an elderly patient with a disturbance in recent memory, you should always suspect in impending signs of Alzheimer's disease. So it starts with recent memory. The patient becomes disoriented to time, person, and place. And then a calculia, he will have difficulty ca with calculations. Then aphasia, he will have difficulty speaking. Then anomia, he will have difficulty with naming things. Then aproxia, he will have difficulty in performing his actual duties. Then also visuospatial disorientation. 
when this patient develops that he cannot even identify different things where he places around the home, those are the early manifestations of Alzheimer's disease. But as the disease progresses into late manifestations, you will see patients with the psychotic disturbance. These patients, first they go into depression, and that depression later go into agitation. And that agitation ultimately leads them to psychotic behavior, and uh, they become incontinent. They will be bedridden in these psychotic symptoms and uh, they get all those kinds of uh, various infections like lung infections and also the ulcers on their back and uh, sacral ulcers, decubitus ulcers and finally succumb to those infections. So this disease is uh, basically a progressive disease characterized by dementia. Now, what we need to understand is Alzheimer's disease is a clinical diagnosis. There is no specific test, whether blood or uh, chemistry or CT or MRI. Even though you see there is uh, some cellular uh, degeneration in the brain in these patients, if you take a CT or MRI brain, but they are non-specific to this particular disorder. Now, let us go and uh, talk a few minutes about treatment. Now, treatment is uh, basically there are two kinds of medications. Remember in this order, if you remember the classification, that will be very useful to reproduce what you studied. Number one, the drugs for cognitive dysfunction, and number two, the drugs for psychotic dysfunction. In cognitive dysfunction, again, there are two types. Number one, NMDA receptor antagonists. Number two, cholinergic inducers. So in number one, NMDA receptor antagonists, the main example is Namenda, that is Mamantin. And in number two, the cholinergic inducers, we have Tacrine, Donipazil, that is Aricept, then Galantamine, that is also another, so Donipazil, Tacrine, Galantamine, and finally Rivastigmine. Those four medications, they increase the level of acetylcholine um, uh, choline enzyme in the neurotransmitter junctions and uh, they increase the symptoms, uh, they, they improve the symptoms. And secondly, the psychotic disturbance. In psychotic disturbance, again, there are three types. Number one, antipsychotics. Number two, antidepressants. And number three, anxiolytics. When we talk about antipsychotics, remember common antipsychotics, haloperidol, Risperidol, thiorazine, and melaril, those are the things, or the thiotexin. Those are the antipsychotics we usually use in these patients. And also, these patients go into depression, so you have to use antidepressants like Celexa and uh, paroxetine, that is Paxil, and uh, fluoxetine. Uh, that is a Prozac and a Zoloft, that is a Cetrolin. Those are the antidepressants. And finally, anxiolytics, like um, carbamazepine, for example. So that is a Tegretol. So those are the main drugs we use in this uh, uh, disease. As, again, two classes, drugs for cognitive dysfunction, classified into NM NMDA receptor antagonists, example, Namanda. Then, cholinergic inducers, examples, tacrine, donipazil, galantamine. Then second class, drugs for psychotic disturbance. The major examples are antipsychotics, antidepressants, and anxiolytics. That's about this major disease, Alzheimer's disease. I hope you get something out of this. And as usual, visit us at www.usmlevideos.net and uh, this month, I am also promoting a book that is USMLE Smasher. This book is excellent book for USMLE Step 2 Clinical Skills Examination. If you are taking USMLE Clinical Skills Examination, I strongly recommend this book because instead of wasting thousands of dollars on expensive courses, you can pass this examination with just one book. That is USMLE Smasher. It is available on Amazon and the bands are noble and even on our website at usmlevideos.net. Thank you. Have a good night.